G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed the last video, the steady wrist, there's a link up there now, you can go watch that first. Then come back and watch this one. Now, I believe in giving credit where it's due and I'd like to credit this video to our Kiwi cousin John across the ditch. Uh, he's inspired me to make, have a crack at making this. So follow me over to the bench and I'll uh, show you what I've got in mind. Alrighty, so uh, hopefully this is a, a rough facsimile of what it is I want to make. A spin index. I've had to, I've got to cheat a little bit because I can't thread on the on my little lathe. I'm going to have to, uh, I, I bought an ER32 collet chuck. Uh, some of you are going to say, why don't you just buy one? Well, up there is a good example of uh, why I didn't buy one. And the second reason is, if I'd have bought one, I would have had to buy all those, a well, whole different set of collets. And I have a good set of ER20 collets now, so I don't want to get in that part. There was this thing here in uh, in that opening images. Uh, unfortunately, that is a welded up uh, steam pipe flange and the damn thing got so hard that I, I'm flat out machine nuts so I'm gonna have to forget about that and I'll explain this bloody thing later when I go to use it. Alrighty uh, there is one other thing I really wanted to put some uh, thrust bearings in behind this end and this end but I couldn't get uh, a thrust bearing with a 32 millimeter ID but my mate up in Bangkok gave me this stuff it is a sheet of or the remains of a sheet of a Teflon and I do believe I read or heard somewhere years and years ago that Teflon is actually the slipperiest substance known to mankind and the more pressure you put on it the slipperier it actually gets so I'm going to try and make a couple of thrush washers out of this stuff alrighty so uh, that's what I want to do first I want to try and get these thrush washers made up I believe it's not impossible to glue anything to it but I, I have got a uh, little bottle of 3M stuff primer that I'm hoping will allow me to glue it to a mandrel so I can machine the outside of it and bore the inside of it so follow me over the lathe and we'll get on with that over there What a glorious finish that is uh, with a 0.2 radius tip. That's just absolutely fabulous. YouTube Analytics has been telling me you guys haven't been watching a lot of this machining. So I thought I'd save you sitting through all that. Uh, this, the normal size of this was 3 inch or 75 mil and I've reduced it down to 70 mil uh, face the end. I want to cut this down to 3 inch. That's why I've only machined it up to there. That's machined to 80 mil. I want to cut off at 75. Uh, I faced the end off again then, I started out by facing the end but it had a really shitty finish because I wasn't using that 0 0.2 radius tip so I just decided I'd uh, face it again with that and it's come up much better. This is that crappy old uh, gate hinge life centre I made a long time ago and it's exactly what I made it for, things like this hollow bar. Uh, and to get that to run true in there, what I did originally was set this up, got it running about as true as I can because you can see this is it's a pretty crappy surface on here. Uh, and then just chamfered the hole so that I could sit this up in there, got the tool up turning tool up and then chamfered the hole so I could sit up in there. I did have some issues with this, this has taken me nearly all day because I was having problems with that uh, that 220 volt DC motor getting really hot. In fact at one side I looked over the back and there's smoke pouring out of the back and I went whoa stop what's going on here. Anyway so I'll get that out of there, cut it off with the saw, clean this bloody thing up, there's this crap everywhere and get the uh, steady rest I made the video before this on here to hold that with and uh, we'll face the other end off and get started on boring it out. Alrighty, so I've got the uh, new steady rest all fitted up and you're probably looking at that thinking that, that looks different, why does it look different? And then you go, well I know, the little brass knobs are missing off there. Mm, yeah they are, but they've been replaced by three other bits of brass. And I did mention at the end of the last video that in this one I would reveal a little secret about this. I actually machined that three and a half weeks ago before I made that. It was actually only after I machined that and I thought, right, I'll have to turn it around now. I suddenly thought, oh, I really need a steady rest. So that got put on the back burner. So in reality, this was actually a side project, but anyway. And then just to top it all off, I went to fit it up and this wouldn't fit inside of that with the three arms we made. Originally, I was going to use, I actually bought a big lump of brass, half inch thick, inch wide stuff to machine these and I was just going to use like a uh, chamfered to almost a point of brass to run on in here 
and then changed my mind and decided I'd use bearings. And I think that's where things went pear shaped and this wouldn't fit back inside here anymore. So all I did was I knocked up three little short ones that I just push up my hand and lock them up, knock them up this morning just for this job and just to be anything smaller than that. So that's 70 mil. So once you're down to maybe 60 mil, I'll be able to use the other ones I made with the fine adjustments. But anyway, I'll move this cam around to the other end. I think I might leave this till tomorrow, no noise Sunday, and just make a start on it tomorrow. Well, I reckon that's probably a bit too noise for no noise Sunday. My wife's in here at the moment. I reckon she was. She'd be going up a brain. But she said, it's Sunday, don't make any noise. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do anything noisy today. Hmm. Might change that tip, see how we go. Got this bar hanging out 55 millimetres because of something I want to do up on the inside. Uh, just about running out of reach. I almost ran out of reach. I got there in the end. But anyway, we'll see... Uh, See how this goes, we might have to give it a miss for today. I still haven't finished cleaning up the inside of that yet either. But anyway, it's too bloody noisy, so it's, uh, we'll have to get left for tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. Just after I went inside, place across the road started smashing concrete up with a jackhammer and I thought well you can make that much noise on a Sunday and I can make a bit of noise here but I kept thinking about is the tool height too high and all the rest of it so I dropped it down a bit and uh, I started making half millimetre cuts and uh, driving it a lot faster uh, you know feeding it faster so uh, I haven't got much so I've taken quite three or four passes out of there at half mil so uh, you know it's increasing the diameter all the time by a millimetre I've got to get at 32 and I'm at around 29 and a half now, so uh, we'll take another cut, so here we go. Not sure what the hell's going on there. An awful lot of crunching noises come out of there. You break the tip. No, it'll be just too much crap up in the hole. I've got to say, I don't know what all that bloody crunching was about up in there, that's weird. Anyway, um, 30 mil. I've still got another 2 millimetres to take out of that. I might just make one more pass now and leave the rest for tomorrow. I think I'll wind it by hand, not power feed it. I mentioned before there was something I wanted to do up inside. What I want to do is only have about an inch either end of this three inches, so 25 mil either end, the same diameter. And then in the center, I want to make it slightly large. So I don't have to have, you know, if I get a little bit out of alignment, it won't be as hard to get it to run smoothly in there. Alrighty, so while you weren't looking, I've put that half millimeter undercut up in the center, so the middle 25 millimeters or an inch is now sorry, a millimeter bigger in diameter than the two ends will be, just for some clearance in the center. I've uh, pushed the tool back in so it only sticks out 30 millimeters, so I just get past that, the end of that 25 mil, and I've changed the tip again. We'll see how we go here because I'm very, very close, and the one thing I don't want to end up is oversized. Didn't re zero the bloody Z after pushing that tool back in either. Oh, look at that. Bloody beautiful. Alrighty, it was just the faintest of skim passes. What a difference less stick out makes, eh? So now I want to put a, a machine, a, an undercut in the face here for that. Um, that thrust bearing washer thing I want to make out of the Teflon, but I think I might leave that till tomorrow. Alrighty, so I've uh, 
got two largest discs I could get out of uh, out of those two sheets I have. This one's 51 millimeters, and I'll use it for the front. This one's 55 because I'd like to make it just a bit bigger on the back because it'll have a six-inch plate running up against it. This one I can uh, on the front. I'll use this for the front. Uh, I can recess that the full three millimeters because this is only 40 millimeters round here. Uh, I can also there's a bit of a groove there. This is 32, but that's I think it was uh, 31.7 or something like that. So I can actually make try and make it run a bit tighter in that groove there, so it acts as a good seal as well as a, you know a thrust washer. But in the back, I'll just make this 32 mil. And it'll have to sit a little bit proud so that that six inch plate can't rub on this face. So I'll machine this one out to uh, now. We'll go 51. Alrighty, so that's that end done, and uh, I'll flip it around, do the other end, but if I bother recording that, it'll be the same shit, different end. Alrighty, so that's both ends of this all done now, and I could not be happier with this. And to be honest with you, I don't know that I could have uh, achieved this without the modifications I did to the cross slide and the bed and everything uh, just before Christmas. This is just the most beautiful fit, and it lines up perfectly with both ends. That's all the way in the chuck. Absolutely beautiful. There's no play in it, nothing. Absolutely spot on. Alrighty, next uh, cab off the rank is turn these things into thrust washers. Now if you're wondering why when I had these, how I had hold of these before, why it had a little, like a tab hang off the side. Well here's a little bit of video to show you why. So I could hang on to it to cut the centre out. Now this is what I used, and it's pretty bloody sharp. And it did a really nice job of, uh, of cutting that out. I wish I had a 32 millimeter one because then I'd try to bore it out. Although that did cut, that's a 30 millimeter one, 30 millimeter one, and it cut it at 30.2, which would have been a bit of a bit of a bugger. Well, I don't know how this is going to go. That's one of those 0.2 radius tips, and it has done a bit of machining that one, so it's not particularly sharp. But if this doesn't want to, if this is making a mess of it, I'll uh, get a piece of tool steel and make grind it so it's really really sharp and try using that. That's bloody wobbling around, isn't it? Why is, why is that wobbling around so much? I'm just using a hole in this. Uh, this is the center out of a hole saw. I always keep them because you never know when they come in handy. And uh, I just machined a step on it, 32, 30.2 millimeters round, so that I could. Uh, and the hole in the center is bigger than six mil, so I just used a a, a can of sunk hoping it would center it. Already just below 55. So much for using that wine as a guide. Alrighty, so that's just that's how I had it. Just a fits on there. You don't need to uh, see me do the other one. How I intend to bore the center out is I'm going to try and glue it in place on a bored out arbor and just bore out the two millimeters I need to take out of here. Uh, if that doesn't work then I'm going to drill them maybe in three places and use some little countersunk three mil M3 screws to hold them in place while I do that. Alrighty so this is the plate I'm going to use for my indexing plate. Uh, I've got a notch in the side here but I Luckily, this is just bigger than uh, six inches, 150 millimeters, and there was a center pop marking, obviously, from when they cut it out. And it's, it comes right to the bottom of that, so that's kind of lucky. Otherwise, I'd have to weld that up. I don't want to machine the outside off this yet. I'll do that after I've. I don't want to bore it. The, the slug that this is bolted to at the moment will end up uh, 
fixed in the centre of this and it's got to be bored out. So once that thing's fixed in there, then we'll machine the outside of it. But before we do all that, I want to drill the three or the 36 holes in here. But I just want to face this off. One side of it's pretty good. This side's a bit of pop marks and shit in it from rust. Didn't do much on that pass. No. It wasn't for that line just there, it'd actually be pretty decent. I want a nice finish in here where it's got to run on that piece of Teflon. I think I can live with that. So uh, I think next up I'll get the rotary table on the mill and uh, we'll drill some holes in here. At this point in the video I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron there's a link down in the description. You can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron there's always buy me a coffee and there's a QR code on the screen there you can scan that or there's always that thanks button down there. Alrighty, after one of those, I can't get to sleep because I can't turn my brain off sessions last night. I started thinking about setting this up in the rotary table with only uh, the 6mm hole in here. It would not take much uh, slot between the bolt and the 6mm hole for these holes in here to get out, you know, even just a little tiny bit and make things difficult later on. So I've decided what I'm going to do is uh, get a hole saw out because I can't really hold this thing. It's 6 inches round and this is only a five inch chuck and I can't hold something uh, six inches round in my in my chucks. So I will bore a hole through this with, uh, with a hole saw and then machine this thing down uh, to a really neat tight fit into that hole, whatever it ends up. And then, uh, and then bore that out to, to fit this. So bore it out to 32 mil. It'll only have about a four millimetre thick uh, wall there, but that should be enough. And eventually I'll weld it on the back, uh, not too much so I don't want the bloody thing. And then I'll make an arbour up, all this can sit on so that I can you know, machine it all up and know for sure that it's all going to run true and everything's going to stay in alignment. The other thing I will do is machine up a, uh, a special bolt that only has a bit of thread at the bottom so I can pass it down through the six mil hole and bolt it to the rotary table and know that it's no, you know, there's no lateral movement like that. But it is shopping day today, so I'll take the wife shopping and when we get back from doing that, I'll get in and get stuck into this. Machine from the front there. Alrighty, had a hell of a time uh, cutting that hole in there. Did it in the mill and uh, no hope to do it on the drill press. I have a plan, Stan.
best. It's what I thought. I'll bring you back when I get this sorted out. Well, I'm glad to turn the camera off. That took bloody forever. Eventually I got it reasonable and jumped in the back and I put three spots of weld in the back to hold it in place. Done with the outside, it's running out of the But the inside's not too bad. So what I'll do is I'll make that arbor up, attach this to the arbor when I know it's you know nice and true. And uh, and then I'll just take another light face off that. Uh, might weld the finish welding back up before we do that in case it warps any. But anyway, that's it for today. It's getting pretty late in the day. I'll make that arbor up tomorrow morning and uh, we'll have a look at it then. Alrighty, so that's all that face off. I'm truly so pleased with uh, how this thing is performing at the moment. When I machined up this arbor over that far, I only had two one hundredths of a millimetre of uh, paper in it, which is nothing cut the foul. So I'm pretty bloody happy about that. Alrighty, so now that I've got that edge done, I might just chomp a little shim from there. And I'll turn it around and uh, sheen the arbor on the back. Not the arbor, the, uh, the, the centerpiece for this. I've welded this all the way around on the back now and the uh, damn thing shrunk a bit. I had to get a flap disc and just very lightly sand the inside of it, get back on this arbor. I'll just sand that a bit actually. Well, that's that. There's a few bits of spatter. I've gone, gone too deep in there with that. But uh, I might clean it up a bit more yet. Man, oh man, that took forever. It can only take a 0.1 of a millimetre cuts, otherwise it would just bog right down and not want to cut. Just throwing little red hot bits at me everywhere. Anyway, I think that's about all we got time for this week, unfortunately. So join me next week and we'll get into this and draw some holes in it and do everything else to it. If you enjoyed this, give give it a great big thumbs up, smash that like button, and I'll see you all next week. Bye bye.